Okay. All right. Call the uh, Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, Joe, would you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, what the hell? Sorry. I am trying to get back onto a different screen that has the names. Um, here we go. Rich Roberts is here. Ryan Allard. Here. I'm here. Joe Hammer, Jim Hughes, George Oikel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Ed whoop, Tony. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. Here. David Drake. Yolanda Antoniak. I'm here. All right. Thank you. Um, that's nine, and uh, at least for now, everybody will participate. First item is a public hearing, public hearing application number 206220Z. James Seeley seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36C2 of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for an oversized residential accessory structure at 118 Brook Road. And uh, again, this is a public hearing. So we'll start off. Um, could the applicant please uh, identify yourself by name and address for the record and tell us what it is that you're proposing to do? Yes. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. So, um, yes, I live in Weathersfield 118 Tubrook Road. Uh, I'm, I have no storage shed in the backyard. My father uh, was nice enough to buy me a shed, and uh, he obviously bought one a little bit bigger than the town desired to get the special permit. So he went uh, over to square footage and uh, now I had to get the special permit, so. Okay. Uh, where on your property are you gonna put it? The back right corner? Yes, sir, yeah. Okay. Have you um, heard from any of your neighbors? Yeah. A couple uh, local neighbors who are immediately uh, adjacent to my property uh, contacted us, and uh, we're familiar with everybody. Everybody's very cool with that with the situation, so no complaints on my end. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, anybody on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Yes, Mr. Chairman. As usual, I uh, try to get out the sites. I got out to this one today. And uh, he, he, it's high, it goes high up back, and uh, but it's a big lot. Uh, there are a couple of other structures on neighboring properties. He has a small tree or two near this, and uh, I don't see any problem uh, with with it uh, where he plans to have it or the size. Yeah, I think I just missed you, George. I, I think you were in my driveway this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, didn't I block your driveway on you? Yeah, so. yeah I, I almost blocked you in, curious to see who you were, but I didn't want to start with you. <laughs> you wanted to be sure I wasn't robbing your house or yeah, something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, God. Nobody's thrown me off their property yet, Mr. Chairman. I do this all the time if I can. <laughs> I hope they well, do. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, it's supposed to come the 20th of January, uh, depending on the weather. That's when it's scheduled to be here. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? I think Mr. Chairman, I think my general question on sheds is, will there be any lighting or any electrical uh, lights or anything that might distract for the neighbors? No, there won't be anything put out there for now, at, at least. I don't, have, I don't have any plans to do anything like that. Not at all. Thank you. It's too far away from my house. It's quite a, it's quite a ways in the backyard from any kind of uh, utility You're access. Just gonna keep it yep. 
Just yeah, I think storage, you would eh? have trouble almost get. Well, no, you couldn't. Probably from your house, you're okay. But what's that? Try ever try to get elect electricity up from your front bank and up into the back. Uh, you know. Yeah, I got some power. I don't even have a spotlight on. I, I I don't even have a spotlight off the back of my house right now. I I got I came into the property a few years ago, so I'm still working on it. You know, it's a it's a 1956 house. You know, working my way up. But I need to free some space up out of the garage. The garage is uh, tied up. I have no storage in the back for any lawnmowers or any kind of uh, tools or anything. So that was it. So, so my only question, my only question is, um, I can definitely understand why someone would want more more storage. We can use some ourselves. Um, on your plot plan, I think you show a 20 by 10 shed, and what you're pro you're actually proposing is a 20 by 12. Is that right? Yes, I originally I was trying to stay under the 200 square foot, and I actually purchased a permit for the 10 by 20. And then my father, like I say, I mentioned he. Uh, he was buying the shed for me. He wanted me to go a little bit bigger. And then I had to go do the extra steps. And then I actually couldn't even get the refund on that $50 for the, uh, for the first permit. They said they, uh, I, I went back just a few days later and they had already ready, uh, registered it or whatever. So oh, okay. I, I paid for the other permit as well. Mr. Chairman, um, can I ask a question here? Yes regarding what the town does. If, if somebody comes in and, and it's, they, they change on this kind of a situation, uh, in other words, they're getting a different structure than they, were, than they came in for a permit on, and they gotta go in and get another permit, they don't get a refund? Can't speak for the building department. Uh, that's what Mr. Silly is referring to. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I, I can't. Is the there that much work, Peter, uh, that they have to go through? I, I would think they would give them some credit. And if, you know, if there's a difference in the value, then just add to the, the original permit. But, uh, that's, that's what I would do. But I, I can't, once again, I can't speak to the, the building department. Thank yeah, if, if I may, the lady there mentioned uh, there would be a $50 uh, service charge to uh, try to get the refund, I guess we would uh, pretty much just zero that $50 out. What a coincidence. Yeah, convenient, but I didn't really complain. I've, I haven't complained to anybody about that. I guess, you know, I'll just eat that one. Okay. Does anyone else have questions for the applicant? If not, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the public that wants to comment on this application? Uh, I don't see anyone. Again, anybody in the public? If not, uh, any last questions from the commission? I re recommend, Mr. Chairman, we close the commission hearing. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion by George, second by Tony to close the hearing. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearings closed. Uh, would someone like to make a motion uh, on the application? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman George here, to uh, approve this application. I don't have the number in front of me. Yep, 206220Z. Thank you. Okay. I'll second that motion, Mr. Chairman. All right. Motion made by George, second by Tony. Um, Peter, no, no stipulations or conditions? None, none that I can think of. All right. Um, any discussion? Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Seeley. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item, other business, 4.1, ZBA use variance referral for 318 Silas Dean Highway. So you, you should have received a copy of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, application for property located at 318 Celestine Highway. Uh, the applicant is Rosemary uh, Amateur. Uh, they are proposing um, to convert the existing building, which has a hair salon uh, and a residence to a two family residential use um, with one unit on each floor. Two family is not permitted in, in the zone that they are located in. I believe it's a general business zone. Yes, it's a GB zone. Um, so they, um, per, uh, uh, and this, this may be a, maybe a first, um, the use, use referral, but um, we have provisions in the regulations that anytime there's a use variance that um, the process requires it to be referred uh, to the commission for report, advice, whatever it may be. So um, that in a nutshell is the proposed application. It's, uh, as I said earlier, it's a hair salon, 318 Silas Dean Highway. Um, the applicant um, has some, um, is claiming some physical uh, issues that um, is their, their hardship, hardship claim. Charles, I don't know if you want to add anything since you're on the uh, on the call here, but uh, that, in a nutshell, is the ap application. Okay, okay, Peter. Uh, good evening, everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, my um, my video was not working on my computer. My audio was not working, so I'm now connected to my cell phone. You're coming in perfectly, Crystal. But, we can see your uh, next. I hope you hear me. I'm seeing my picture on the cell phone. I'm not seeing anything on the computer screen, which I think I'm up oh, now. So I think I'm going to try. I turned on my audio on the computer. Let me turn. I think you can hear me now. All right. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, Charles, we may have lost you now. Okay, you. Okay. I think we've. Oh, he's he's. You're frozen up, Charles. The two family is not permitted in that zone. That's correct. I think you. I think you asked me. You, you broke up a little bit there. You you were asking me is two family permitted in that zone, and uh, it is not. Okay. Mixed use is permitted, but not the not the two family. Okay. Uh, I can hear you again. I think you're back. Okay, let me get rid of this compu computer cards. All right. Okay. Um, I, I apologize for the confusion with this um, technological um, issue here. So um, I checked the, the record and I realized that a variance was granted um, a, couple, a few years ago. Um, don't recall the year, no, I don't have my notes with me. But it's, it seemed to me it was, a, it was actually a, a youth bar a variance to, um, to allow a business of, of less than a certain square feet. I think it was a business less than 5,000 square feet in the residential zone. Because at that time there was only a residence there, and then um, the owners had applied for the variance for to, to put the uh, hair salon in. So the, the hair salon is now in place, and um, this is a mixed-use 
uh, a zone where mixed use is permitted, uh, residential and um, business. Uh, so so uh, they have that in there. Now. But the, the owner, like Peter said, um, expressed to me that uh, she's getting up in age and she is no longer able to, to climb the stairs. She lives on the second floor and the salon is being operated on the first floor. So what she wants to do is to convert the first floor to a residence. So she will now have a two family unit, a two family house with um, one unit on, on uh, both floors and she would rent the upper floor this time and move into the first floor. And no commercial, Charles? With no commercial, because um, based on the based on what I gather from her, the, uh, the commercial use is not viable because of um, COVID nineteen. So a lot of people, uh, you know, are um, suffering the loss of um, their their commercial or business use because of COVID. I can so, ask Peter, are you? Um... The, these lots go down back. They're all pretty well paved. The driveways, I assume this one is. Is that correct? And uh, adequate parking for the two residences, so forth. That those kind of things are met. All right, Peter. Maybe. Uh, actually, the the um, parking ratios will probably go down um, as a result the verse, from the commercial and the mixed mixed use to what they're proposing now. So it should be a less uh, intensive parking requirement than exists today. Okay, yes, no because getting up and down the driveways like we have had on some of those, uh, a little bit of that, not yeah, much. Some of, them, some of them are narrow, but they'll have to work work that out. The, the um, owner will be living there, so that should should help. Okay, but there is parking down back and you know all that, and no no problems with it. So okay. And they're not asking for parking out front, right? No, they're not asking for anything other than the the use variance. Okay. Does anyone else have any thoughts on this? I guess the question I have is how close is the next multifamily zone? Is it the next street over? Is it uh, far away? The Close next multifamily zone, the S SRD zone? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, yes. Um, Across the street, Peter? Are, are you referring to, to zones that would allow two families? Because if you're referring to zones that would allow two families, um, that would be going more north towards um i think not street over by that side peter yeah across the road and up the hill across the road yeah. across one, yes i think so it's area. close so it sounds like it's nearby because i i guess my question mm -hmm. is because it's zoned mixed use right now i was and it, and the applicant is requesting um a two family right that she wants to change this into a two family instead of mixed use so are there any two family um, areas nearby? That's my question. And it sounds like it's pretty close. There are. There Actually, I think there are some in this strip. Some are commercial, but there's some residents scattered in there. Um, our only zone in town that allows two family is the C resident zone. Um, and as somebody mentioned, there are some C resident zones on the other side of the Silas Dean Highway and, and up, uh, up a bit. Um, okay. So... Um, I have a question, which is, are there any two family houses on the Silas Dean Highway on the north end near this that might just be grandfathered leftovers from prior zoning and how close to this house? There's, I know there's one across the street, um, might even be right across the street. And then I'm just trying to go down the street in my mind. Um, I think Pope Deli was the last one. It might have been. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you, you might be right. So, I, but I think there are some across the street 
um, which is a residence zone uh, yeah. on the Silestine Highway. I sense the commissioners, my fellow commissioners, being concerned this could be the beginning of incrementally uh, along here or and or the other side of this becoming a multifamily area or a two family area. I would hope this would not be the case, but uh, I don't think this situation suggests that. And I don't another... see any more of it either. One other question is under the current zoning, would somebody be allowed to have both floors as commercial with no residential or do you have to have both residential and commercial? No, you can have both floor, floors as commercial if that was your question in, yes. this, in this zone. There's, um, you know, handicap accessibility um, issues that they may have to, you know, figure out if they were two different businesses, but um, yeah, yes, you could have. Um, but PD, there aren't any two floor businesses there along that strip that I know of, do you? I think the uh, financial business, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, Horizon. Horizon Financial maybe. And then there's another financial one oh, that I think okay. also has offices upstairs. It's just one business, but uh, yeah. they do use uh, the upper floors. But is the, is the current owner of the property applicant who wants to live downstairs, does she operate the hair salon or is that rented out to somebody else? No, she's, she's the operator. I, I guess I'll just observe, this is not, you know, I think this is an issue for the ZBA in terms of uh, mm -hmm. how to deal with this, but, you know, I, I think there's an, there's a delicate balance in terms of, is there something unique about the property that presents a hardship or is it really a personal type of hardship that's for this owner, but, you know, may not uh, be present anymore if the property gets, gets sold to somebody else. No, I, I would agree with you, Joe. I mean, the across the street is, I think, the C zone where you have the possibility of two families as of right. And, you know, I'll use George's uh, sounding board on this, but I think, you know, for 25 or 30 years, we've been trying to get this side of the Silestine north of Knott Street converted over to commercial you know, from the kind of legacy residential. And this, you know, frankly, is a step backwards in that regard. I mean, it used to be planned development office zone, you know, trying to encourage people to, you know, basically combine the lots and build larger buildings like the one right on the corner. You know, that obviously didn't come to pass, but, um, you know, sort of, incrementally most of the residential properties along there have been you know converted to one business or another and uh, frankly i don't think this is a legally recognized hardship but uh, i'm not on the zba anymore so so this, this is referred to you i suppose if someone want to make a motion to refer the following, you know, position to the ZBA, you could certainly do that. Um, so we haven't had a lot of these, but I would assume that's uh, an available option for you. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like the opposite of the trend for the, for the area that we've been, you know, the, the, the past few changes that have been made in this area have all been like veering towards commercial and now we're now this so like I don't know it just I think I agree with our chairman that it just it feels like a step backwards so are we what are we doing we're we're making a recommendation of like no to them <laughs> like what if, if, we, if we have an opinion collectively we can share it with them Okay, well then, I cast my vote. <laughs> so we, so in essence, we'd be saying we're not endorsing the concept for two families in this section of town, and we'd like to 
stick with the agenda of the 10 year master plan of conservation and development. Does that make sense? Because yeah. it could be precedent setting and it could have a domino effect. In the same regard, after COVID's done, if the vaccines come through in another year from now, it might be a different marketplace out there, which is reason for us not to endorse this, this uh, transition. And I guess just for debate Charles, sake. Charles, were you trying to say something? Breaking up. Turn your video off there, Commissioner Roberts. So, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, yeah, just just to answer a question that was previously raised, uh, and like Peter uh, said, the C zone is the only zone that um, allow that allows uh, two family residents, and the the entire um, directly across the street on Silas Dean going all the way up to Cumberland. So um, from Cumberland Avenue on the north to North Street on the south and um, Silas Dean to the, e to the east and um, to the west, they would have um, a part of Park Avenue, uh, what's the name of the street? I think that's Walcott Hill. Road, the entire that entire uh, square there is uh, zoned for um, two families. Okay. Um, I think the chairman uh, nailed down pretty well what the intentions were of uh, historic commission. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, because I was on it when we converted this. And I think we thought that by converting it, it would um, and be a business zone and then tear down some of the units a few at a time and maybe put some kind of commercial operations in there. Uh, this isn't happening. I don't think it will, but uh, we should probably not be encouraging, as I sense this with the commission's desire seem to be going that direction, not to encourage residential. So, but I, I going to be difficult, of course, for the ZBA probably to turn down this applicant, but that's their decision. I, I guess I would just offer, uh, you know, one option, I suppose, a little bit watered down as an alternative to saying we urge that they deny it could be to say that we are concerned that the request you know is not in keeping with the intent and purpose of the zoning here which is to encourage the presence of commercial that it's really going in the opposite direction and uh, request that they give careful consideration to that aspect of the application, you know, I suppose we could do it that way too. Yeah, good, Joe. If you, if you would make that as a motion, I'll second it. I so moved. All right, second. I didn't mean to cut off discussion. I just kind of wanted to frame the conversation. Anyone else? Anyone everybody think this is clear enough to the ZBA, the motion? I think it is. Yeah, let's call the motion. I think it was well said by Joe. I thought so. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
Okay, thank you. I apologize. I don't know what what it is about these meetings. I do about ten a week, and this is the only one that freezes up. You're, I think it's the aurora borealis effect. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Dave. Uh, Four point two discussion of final fence regulations. That would be Charles again. Yep. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. So as you can see, we have um, made the minor adjustments. Um, we have we have removed that um, sentence from number from C, and we have placed it up in front. Um, where it says no permit is required for fencing not exceeding seven feet high and um, below are the general performance standards. Um, one of uh, our ZBA members has um, raised a, a concern or a suggestion, I should say, regarding um, that paragraph that says um, uh, open fence. She was concerned that um, open fence was not, um, did, did not seem to be included in this um, regulations. However, uh, in number two, it's, it's addressed in, in, in number two, uh, where it says the fence or other structure shall, when viewed at right angles, not obstruct visibility by more than 50%. So that there, um, We'll take care of the um, open fence issue. Um, and um, Charles, repeat that again about the open character of a fence, 50%. So, so in other words, we, you can't have a total uh, fence without some light coming through it. You, you must have the um, open fence. Um, that's in the front yard area. Uh, in the front yard, and this is this is referring to uh, corner lots. So that's where we we are um, talking. But the about. open open fence ha is nothing to do with behind a building line, right? Those can be opaque. Yes, okay. but on the corner lot, though, it has to be. Um, there has to be a. a uh, kind of picket fence. Um, if you if you read the regulation section yeah. through there, yeah. and and beginning from where it says a freestanding fence or other structure may be erected above ground between the street line and the building line, provided that and it lists four items. Provided that number one shall not exceed four feet. Number two, when viewed at right angles, shall not obstruct visibility by more than 50 percent and then it tells you about the components none shall be greater than six inches in width or diameter and um, each component shall distribute it so as to be separated by dimension at least equal to its own width and b provide uniformity of design and visibility throughout the length and height of the fence wall or structure then then b uh, kind of flows into that now where it says fencing on corner lots shall not exceed four feet in height along the two front sides of the property and may only be increased to six feet high starting at the rear street side corner of the building. And then of course he tells you about the, the rear yard, you know, you could be um, up to seven feet and um, a building permit would be required if it exceeds seven feet and Rich. so on and so forth regarding the historic district Com commission being um, having to approve that and um, talks about shrubbery and uh, fence should be constructed in a manner that would not create an unsafe situation. Rich, I have a question. Sure. Charles, um, just reading through 7.2, mm -hmm. it seems to me A would apply, you know, even when you, 
I guess as, unless I'm missing some of the other language, it seems like mm -hmm. A would apply even if only one, you're not a corner lot and you only have one side facing a street. And I'm saying that only because B then specifically talks about fencing on a corner lot. So is, is the intent even if you're you know, not a corner lot on the side facing the street to still you know, want to be subject to those rules one through four above? Well, um, from, from A coming down, it's trying to, to tell you that um, you should not obstruct uh, sightline visibility in any way, you know, and this and, and sightline visibility does not necessarily um, affect corner lot as such. It could be speaking to a, a car vehicle exiting a driveway. That is why we have the four feet height, and then we talk about the um, open fences. So I guess one question I have is under B, should it, in addition to what it says now, should it say, does it need to say that fencing on corner lots is also subject to all of the other provisions of A, just so nobody can somehow try to argue yes. later that if you have a corner lot, you only have to be limited to four feet and the rest don't apply to you? Again, yeah, I don't have- No, no, I would not say so because it already um, tells you at the in, in the okay. beginning that it shall not exceed four, four feet in height. But okay. B, B is just re it's just reiterating the fact that it shall not be higher than four feet. And then the two front sides, maybe four feet and then it can't be increased it, it can only be increased to six feet starting at the rear side of the corner of the building so i think i think the b is really really um important in there and uh, sort of help to to um <coughs> address the corner light the corner lot um issue in in terms of um sight line no i, I I think we agree with that. I, I'm not sure that it's clear that all of the other criteria, one through four in A, also apply to fences on corner lots. So um, at this point, um, would the suggestion be that we um, Eliminate what? Oh, well, could B be e? 0.5? Eliminate B? I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Could uh, could we just make could we just make B part five? Eliminate uh, the part about eliminate the part about the four foot high fences because that's already covered in part one. And then just say that like you can't go to six until you start getting towards the rear lot. Or how's that worded? Either that or qualify B or amplify on B saying, in addition to all of the requirements contained in A, fencing on corner lots shall not exceed and so forth. You must satisfy A, B, and C. Yeah. So in, in addition to all the, the um, points mentioned in a fencing and corner lots shall not exceed four feet in height and yeah okay i think that's what joe was saying yeah and I, I, like, I think as you phrased it rich nobody could be confused if you say it that way i think it's so clear. so so yeah take out b and then we say five in addition to all the um points in Section no, I think it's worth keeping separately as, as as B and and you know draw attention to that being the provision that governs corner lots specifically in addition to one through four of A. I take that point. So yes, and I, I do take that point. So we could um, we could strike B out and say and say five in addition to all the uh, aforesaid in um, I, section A. I think Charles, what 
Rich and I were saying was leave leave be the way it is as a separate one, but just begin the sentence by saying in addition to the requirements set forth in section A above comma fencing on corner lots and continue with what you have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. The um, the other comment in uh, uh, Rita Ann Owen's email suggesting maybe a little bit of a tweak to the lead in language on 7.2 I also thought was pretty good. You know, fencing not exceeding seven feet in height. Do not need a permit provided the following conditions are met just so that uh, it just reads a little better, I think. Okay. Anyone else have any comments on this? You know, I don't really have a, a comment, but I do have a curious question. And that is, um, how did we come up with seven feet as the, the maximum height? How was like, as opposed to six feet or, or another another height, how was seven feet chosen? Uh, in answer to that, that's a, that's a building department uh, requirement. And I think it has something to do with the structural integrity of the fence. Okay. And uh, wind loads as well. Anything over seven feet, they start to get concerned okay. about those kind of things. Anything preventing me from berming my land up and doing seven feet and making a, a net 10 foot height fence? <laughs> yes, if the building, per, if the building department approved it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the, the building permit's not in charge of my land height. <laughs> That changes it to a fort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we actually, as an aside, we have an enforcement action that we've been pursuing for three years in another town where the person built an eight foot high fence. And one of the ways they tried to deal with it was to pile dirt three feet high on their side of it and then measure it as a five foot high fence. Uh, I mean, uh... Fence is quite a it's 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 quite a different um, issue from from other uh, other um, sections of the regulation, and it, it causes a lot of concerns. Um, because what happens in, in I wouldn't say in most cases, but in a lot of in, in a few, in quite a number of cases, um, a property owner would go up and um, and construct a fence without even um, consulting the, the department. So and, um, the controversial fences that came up came up because um, they were just observed after they have been constructed. And of course, <clears throat> you know the story too, went to the Board of Appeals um, to ask them to remain that way. They were turned down. Um, there was one at um, Jordan Lane, and I think it was Goodrich, uh, it might not be Goodrich, but to, my, to the best of my recollection, it was at the uh, corner of one of those streets. And uh, it's actually almost facing, or I could say um, directly facing um, 341 Jordan Lane, that um, old uh, healthcare facility. Okay. And what happened is that that fence was observed by staff. And then when we checked into it, we found that Although it was contrary to the regulations somewhat, um, there was no sightline issue there. And it afforded the, the homeowner some sort of privacy because um, he indicated that he was going to put a swimming pool in, in, in the back. And um, I, you know, I jokingly told Peter um, of what um, the property owner said that um, he, he, he wanted the fence to be higher than four feet so that um, Someone do not just come running from off the street and jump into the pool and. But you, you know, can make you can make an exception. 
to those kind of lots where they need a high fence for the pool, right? No, we don't want to make an exception for a for corner lot to, to be higher than, than right. um, four feet. But, but the point yeah, that I, I was trying to come... Because I think integrity of corner lots is important to me. What I was trying to get to, uh, uh, George, is that um, the, 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 the town engineer and myself will look at these fences in its entirety, whether it was constructed before the, the um, we know about it or someone inquired about it, we, we would make sure, we want to make sure that there's no sightline issue um, okay. at, the, at the corner lot. I think this goes a long way to helping corner lots, but of course they're all over town with trees, shrubs that are 10 feet tall and some of them. But because let's face it, corner lots are, are exposed, are mostly exposed than, than the um, interior lots. They're exposed to two street sides and uh, oftentimes you find that the, the land hook owner will tell you that, um, the property owner will say, well, I need to have the privacy of my backyard, you know, so that he wants his fence a little higher. And um, you can see the reason for allowing a six foot high fence when it comes to the, to the um, side street on a corner lot, yeah. Okay. So, so we will, yeah, um, thank you. we will modify this and then file an application so that we can schedule a hearing and um, receive, you know, the appropriate level of public, uh, public comment on this. So uh, at this point, that probably wouldn't happen until February. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Next, uh, 4.3, discussion of parking improvements to the rear of 163, 189. So uh, you should have received in your packet uh, a, a very brief memo summarizing uh, the proposed uh, conceptual parking plan for uh, the area, primarily behind the fire headquarters on, on Main Street. Uh, the town engineer um, has taken a look at uh, the feasibility of this and um, has just simply provided you with a conceptual plan just to get an initial reading from the thoughts of the uh, planning and zoning commission. Um, in a nutshell, this conceptual plan um, increases um, the existing supply, which is 42 parking spaces to a total of 119 parking spaces. Uh, this area of Main Street has now started to experience um, some additional parking demand as a result of a couple of restaurants uh, in anticipation of the Webb Dean Stevens new um, uh, museum edition. Uh, so we have been uh, in conversation with all of the property owners impacted by this. They all have received copies of the plans. Um, and um, clearly this would require uh, cross easements and uh, all sorts of agreements uh, in order to go forward. So it's just simply at this point, a concept for conversation. Um, and we've provided it to you for basically for informational um, purposes. There are a couple of issues with the way the uh, plan is drawn up right now. A portion of the parking lot uh, projects into uh, the rear residential property behind uh, residentially zoned property behind the um, fire headquarters. It also uh, has a small impact on the community garden. There's a couple of plots that um, are impacted. I think it's four of the uh, garden plots are impacted by the proposal. Um, so those are the real um, issues that present themselves with this particular layout. You can also see there is a um, stormwater basin uh, proposed uh, as well in order to deal with the uh, increased runoff that would be caused by this parking lot. Um, there, is no fund there is no funding at this point. Uh, 
Hey, Charles, can you can you mute yourself, please? You can hear now. Ask him. Charles, can you mute yourself, please? Um, so the so as as I said earlier, the the plan is presented to the commission just for uh, for a preliminary uh, input uh, to get some feedback as to uh, any concerns you might have with uh, uh, the creation of this um, revised parking scenario behind these buildings. Can't imagine the town engineers too excited about the increased impervious area. No, that would be a negative as well as some of the others. So are we are we looking into like pervious pavement type options? We we've talked about that. Um, we've talked about using the um, the landscaped islands mm -hmm. for infiltration as well. Um, we really have not evolved the plan any farther than just a simple a simple layout. I'm not even sure. He's taken a look at grading and and those kinds of other issues that would that would be uh, factored in as well. So yeah, it look, looks like a low lying area in that sort of northeast section quadrant there. Right. So so the yeah, snow piling. Yeah. Is uh, stored. Is that enough clearance and for the fire trucks to get out with that parking? Is it? Yeah, he did the turning radius on um, on the on the garage doors. The um, parking. Uh, in the front there, uh, outside of the garage doors, uh, is pushed closer to the Hughes building than it exists today, which creates some additional uh, room. They were concerned about having parking spaces right there, but with the two-way travel and the uh, the radius, um, he believes that can be that can be met. I guess one other question, Peter, is if if you, if the town were not able to get the Hughes property and the Old Town Cafe property to participate in this. Is it possible to do a, a modified version of this just on the firehouse property with not as many spaces, but still more than are there today? Or do you have a, because it looks like you could still get the 24 foot, you have it with coming in past the firehouse, probably you would lose those seven spaces on the left and more spaces on both sides, but I'm just curious if they can still come up with something worth it. He, he started to uh, break it out into phases, you know, for that particular purpose, assuming if one or another of the property owners didn't want to participate, what would the impacts of that be? So uh, he has other uh, concepts, but this is the one that he felt he wanted to present uh, to the commission uh, at this stage. But um, uh, it certainly would require all property owners uh, to participate in order for it to work based on this, uh, based on this plan. It also doesn't show the new house on Center Street, if you notice. Yeah. As uh, Peter has uh, our colleague on the commission, Hughes, uh, been in, uh, seen this and uh, does he have any concerns with the Hughes property? Uh, he, he didn't express those. He was provided with uh, a plan. Uh, so was the fire chief. Uh, and so were the owners of uh, the Old Town and the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. Um, they all were um, reasonably interested in seeing something like this happen. Uh, this is no small uh, price tag either. Uh, this is a significant uh, investment. Um, and as I said earlier, at this point, there is no, no funding in place. So um, it's really just for feasibility uh, purposes. Um, we also tried to provide a buffer, if you notice, to the, to the residential properties on Center Street uh, in compliance with your buffer uh, requirements. So uh, we tried to be mindful of that as well. Is the child still making for problems parking wise in the area he's um he removed his um tent just very recently so that parking is now opened up again so that's 13 spaces um we also just so you know uh, in the last week or two um we we met with interested primarily restaurants and we uh installed um 10 minute uh takeout pickup um parking signs in front of those interested restaurants just to provide them with um, you know, an area where people can pull in real quick 
call into the restaurant, have them bring out, bring out the food and then, and then go on their way. So um, many of the restaurants are uh, trying that model to uh, do more of that uh, to survive through the winter time. So we felt uh, the town needed to step in there and, and provide those short-term parking spaces for the businesses. It's a good step, Peter, and I'd like to see you uh, even more involved with the uh, restaurants in, in our town. And uh, there's quite an article in today's current regarding what uh, they're doing down in Berlin, Connecticut, regarding the restaurants and so forth and the uh, economic, the, the planning our economic development people, I don't know which, uh, are involved with that. So. Uh, Whatever you can do to uh, work with them, uh, I think is a great idea. I don't like seeing any of them closing down part-time or otherwise like Lucky Lou's, I know, but uh, you know, it's, uh, we gotta be helpful to these folks. Yes, we, yes, we do. I guess I'll just yeah. add that I don't, I don't know that if the, the Keeney Center, if it ever maxes out, uh, I know that that's public parking that everybody has accessible to them. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that this option is like we're, we're being shown the Cadillac and I think it'll have to be trimmed down to the Chevy in order for, you know, things like the MS4 requirements and the low impact developments. I think I think what we're looking at here is just not even possible um, based on that. So, you know, it's this is this is one option, but it's definitely going to have to get pared down. I don't see how this is ever going to work with the amount of impervious being changed to pervious unless there's some sort of unique uh, proprietary kind of paver system that we're gonna end up using. And then, you know, some relatively decent amount of permitting potentially with uh, some of that drainage that's being changed. So I don't know, it's, we're, we're looking at this option, but it's, it's obviously already sort of. So Ryan, you would like so. to see the town engineer come up with some sort of proposal outside of a, a basin, storage basins and that stuff uh, for the pavement or this particular site, right? Well, the town engineer, like his his policy. Yeah, he's always talking about this kind has of Has always been low impact developments and like reducing the amount of pervious that we have in an area as opposed to increasing it, which this significantly increases in this area um, a pretty decent amount. So what would, I'm just- What would be the reaction to some type of um, stone or gravel surface? Yeah, I mean, if it was like a, like you could go like a sort of commercial driveway, like with the gravel stone, like it would have to have a pretty good base associated with it. Um, you know, there, there is the increased maintenance costs with, with something like that, with something that's like a looser sort of pea stone or something. Um, but then there's, but then it, what you can do is you can consider this something where you have parking that's used most of the time where there's going to be a lot of this parking that's a lot, let's just say like the existing perv uh, impervious area in this location. If we maintain that square area of impervious situated it so we can maximize the number of spots and then beyond that it was the pervious where it's the stone or, you know, when you, you look at West Farms Mall, it's actually just grass because it's not used as much. So mm -hmm. it'll be used more when there's a wedding happening, like during wedding season. But throughout the course of the year, you know, Keeney Center, every time we park at Keeney Center, when I go with somebody, it's like not even close to full. So it's like, I think, uh, I think we can justify the fact that it's going to be about max, like, 40, 50% capacity. And then there's gonna be events where we need to have all of that parking available. And, you know, maybe maybe that's how you sell it as here's 90% of the time, here's the other 10% where there's a significant event happening in the area. <clears throat> okay, that's why I posed it, just to see what the reaction was. We did talk about doing a portion in the back with some alternative right. surface material. Um, yeah, and then during the winter, you can use that as snow storage because it's not gonna be as necessary. So, yep. um, you know, to Commissioner Edwards' uh, point. 
Okay. So as I say, this is just a I think you'd want to have a point. substantial number of new small. Yeah. Substantial number of what? I think you'd want to have a substantial number of new spots just to justify the investment. Yeah, definitely. So this is an increase of 69 and 8, you know, 75 spaces, basically, to the supply mm -hmm. down there. Peter, how does the lighting situation? How does the lighting situation? Is that part of the discussion? Any fencing, and does the foot traffic go over to the museum directly? Yeah, if you look at the um, the edge of the pavement, it it connects pretty closely with the driveway in the uh, Webb Dean Stevens um, mm -hmm. Museum to get you to the back where the barn is. Um, we were anticipating adding lighting as well. Um, there is some lighting in the fire uh, headquarters right now. So that would be uh, continued and likely would be placed within the, um, the islands that are shown on the plan. So there, there would be a lighting component. Okay, well, thank you for your feedback. I'll pass them. I pass this back to the uh, town engineer for his further review. December 1st minutes. Uh, we received all, those. Yeah, you should have only received those this afternoon. So if you want to table that and you haven't had time to review it, that's fine. How does anyone feel about that? Let's get the approval, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Who wants to table it? Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Motion to table by Ryan. Second by <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Uh, staff reports. Um it's been quiet. We have an enforcement um, action pending right now up on uh, Russell Road. If you remember, we approved a church uh, some years ago up on Russell Road. That property just recently changed hands and the owner has gone in there and taken out all the trees, uh, started grading the property um, without permits from the Wetlands Commission or from, from you guys. So this may be an action that is in front of you. Uh, at some point uh, in the near future, depending on what their plans are for the property. So just to, in case you get a phone call about that. Okay. Uh, public comments? Um, just one, one other thing. I'll be sending all of you a, a set of revised zoning regulations based on the two significant amendments we made um, over the last couple of months. So um, you should be getting those in the next uh, week or two. Um, we may, given the size, we may, um, if your preference is to get a hard copy, um, let me know and we can certainly have those delivered uh, to your to your homes, um, unless you want, want them electronically as well. Can we get them as books on tape? <laughs> let, me, let me talk to the librarian and see if we have that uh, capability. Make mine a hard copy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll need a hard copy as well. Okay. Anyone else? That's fine. I just let me know, and I'll we'll 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 make the rounds and drop them off. Okay. Uh, anybody in the public? No nope. correspondence. There was a letter from Deep about the Putnam Bridge Trail wetlands permit. Yes. So there is a wetland permit issued for the uh, Putnam Bridge Trail uh, project. Uh, between Wethersfield and Glastonbury. Um, just for your information, that project is um, uh, nearly um, about to go out to bid. Um, there are some issues outstanding regarding who's maintaining uh, certain components of the project. They are uh, uh, inquiring about whether the town would be willing to maintain uh, uh, not only Wethersfield, but also Glastonbury. So we're in the middle of a conversation 
with the DOT uh, about that. But nevertheless, that project is slated to start construction in the springtime um, and will um, potentially be finished uh, in less than a year. So um, just, just passing that on for your informational purposes. And you're talking about the Glastonbury side primarily? This, the, the more significant length of the project is in Glastonbury, but on the Weathersfield side, there's going to be a parking lot um, right where they've got the temporary staging area on Great Meadow Road. Uh, then there'll be a, a ramp that goes up to the bridge. And then the town line is basically the center line of the Connecticut River. So that portion uh, is in That's Weathersfield, cool. but the lion's share of the trail is all primarily going to be nothing in England. Nothing more in Weathersfield. Nothing just, more in Weathersfield. No, just what I mentioned. And Peter, that we built the exact at the exact same times. It's the same, yeah. It's the same, yeah. same contractor, same project. The phasing of the construction, I don't think, has been been uh, laid out yet. But um, it's one one big project. Hmm. All right. Okay. Let's see, we have action-packed future agendas here. Yes. So all three of these on the agenda will likely be heard at the first meeting in Jan in January. Okay. What day is that? I believe it's January 5. Okay. Maybe that'll be good parking for the new hotel that's going in there, huh? Or for the movies. Or for the movie, that's right. Or all of the above. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have anything they want to discuss tonight? If not, wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Peter, you should let your beard go a little longer. Maybe you'd be a little more festive for the holiday. Okay, I'll see what I can do. You can just get the point. There's not a lot of time left, but you know. <laughs> no, you're just like a more like classic, more classy one, you know what I mean? Right. It's long, the long beard is a bit more old fashioned. I've, I've certainly started to put the weight on, so that's that's you know getting me there too. <laughs> <laughs> it's bulking season. You, you don't be so hard on yourself. Next right. thing you start grow the beard, Peter, and they're expecting gifts from you, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have that. No. <laughs> All right. All right. Anything yes. else? If not as Merry no Christmas. Bang. Motion, to, motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Happy holidays, all. Happy you as holidays. well. Holidays to everybody. Good holidays. Bye, everybody. Best of wishes, everyone. See you next year. Yep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. See you next. Good night, everyone.